how's your relationship kind of been with Rob Zombie? He seems to kind of like you in a lot of the movies he seems to, to direct. Yeah, so um, when I first moved to Hollywood, there was a casting director named Monica Mickelson who had cast me in a movie in Texas, and it was a film called Serving Sarah uh, with Matthew Perry and the lovely Elizabeth Hurley one of your countrymen and I got sick and was unable to do the film and she replaced me with Mike Judge who went on to create Beavis and Butthead and, and do wonderful work as the filmmaker Mike Judge. Uh, the point with that is, is that she didn't forget me so when I came to Hollywood she was casting the Rob Zombie movie called The Devil's Rejects and I read the script and I had never seen anything like that in my live long day. The very first page there's some giant dragging a bloody corpse through the woods and I was I didn't know what to make of this so nonetheless I prepared went in and did the audition um, and I went to the South by Southwest Film Festival in Texas and I got a call from Monica and she said, Rob really liked your audition. And I was like, oh, that's nice. I didn't, I knew who Rob Zombie was and I knew White Zombie more. Didn't listen to a lot of their music, but knew it. I'm like, okay, uh, I was kind of afraid. And <laughs> so uh, um, then she called two days later and says, yeah, you're the guy, you're Adam Banjo, he, he likes you. And the point is there were some like really cool cats like, uh, Steve Zahn and Jeremy Davies, who I really looked up to those guys, and they were auditioning for the same role. In, and I was like, this must be a big deal, what the hell? And well, then I was really scared because I just got a job from this crazy rock and roll guy. So I called a friend of mine, Walton Goggins, who is, um, had done House of a Thousand Corpses for Rob Zombie. And I'm like, hey, I'm a that good southern christian boy going to work for this devil worshiper what's what, what 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 should i do he laughed at me he said what is wrong with you he said go do the movie um, you're gonna have an incredibly great time and a friend for life and those are really true words that's exactly what happened and i had just a wonderful experience working on the devil's rejects for all the reasons you can imagine and some the big thing for me was and you reference that it's your favorite. And I think it's your favorite because it's so nuanced and it's so rich in detail. And every one of those characters lives many layers of lives, no matter how little they're in the movie. Um, they have these wonderful arcs, all of them. And I just think there was something really special and lightning caught in that bottle. And on top of that, we had this great, uh, foundation of masters of the genre, the horror genre, in, like Sid Haig and Bill Mosley and William Forsythe and Ken Foray. And they have this really wonderful skill set that they can really encroach your personal space. They creep in on you and before you know it, you're feeling, and they do this to the camera without the camera being aware of it. Now, I, I was very observant during filming to recognize this and I'll always be grateful for having had that experience and to get to work with Jeffrey Lewis who was such a blast you know he's like hey, I'm Clint Eastwood's best friend you know he had a card that said that because they'd done all those every which way but loose movies and and it was so just great and Rob was so exciting and uh he's very genuine uh, he's intense. Uh, he, he, I always say he knows what he likes and he likes what he knows. And so there's not really a gray area. He doesn't mind you improving. He doesn't mind you uh, adding something, but it has to work. And if it doesn't work, he's not going to try to like, okay, let's fix it. He'll just move on. If that doesn't work. Um, let, let's, let's not waste any time or energy. I think he's, because he's a performer, I think he recognizes uh, right away yes and no as that goes um but he's he's about the work he's tireless uh but he's got a great sense of humor and it it doesn't suck hanging with rob zombie and being part of one of the stories that he tells and i think he's just gotten better um 
I think the devil's rejects was there was something that happened at the table read that just kept happening every day on set. It was like the world cup, you know, it just kept getting better and better until we were on the final day. And then, you know, I think that movie holds up obviously very well. Uh, Halloween, he was very, uh, he, he, he was very conscious of wanting to pay homage and, and respect to John Carpenter's Halloween. Yep. Give it a little backstory. Uh, not everybody appreciates that, but uh, even still, I think his, his effort was, was with integrity and respect. And, um, and then uh, we get to 31, which is the next one I did. And that was just... Whew, that was mean. I thought Noel Cluggs was the worst character I had ever performed in Halloween. And then Psycho Head comes along, uh, which is by far the worst guy I've ever done. And it was difficult because I kept trying to find some reason, you know, with Noel, you know, he didn't have a good upbringing and I wanted to get all the guys to sort of be nasty lots with me so that I wouldn't feel so bad about myself and we were going to get the big guy you know little guy big guy syndrome get the little big guy under my thumb none of that worked for for 31 it just I couldn't find a reason why were we so you know clockwork orange on acid and and in the end I just used one of Rob's songs uh, I think it's Dragula yeah I'm barely certain one of the last verses is I will never die and as I'm being cut in half with the chainsaw and yelling <laughs> that and that was the only re way I could make it work and Rob was very helpful to to serve me as a director for sure as he always is but um, that was a difficult movie we shot it very quick and it was very physical and it, it, it just uh, wasn't my favorite out of the three, let's put it that way. It, um, but I recognize on screen, it, it holds up obviously. And now he's out doing the Munsters, which uh, yeah, yeah. is a really fun show from my childhood or even before my childhood, but uh, we saw reruns. I don't know, did you get the Munsters in the UK ever? Well, we we never really we never got it sort of officially released, but you you could kind of find other ways to to see it on on I usually on, online. Yeah. So yeah, it's great, and it, it's got a great sense of humor to it. And so I think he's and he is a huge, huge monster fan. So it couldn't be in better hands. And I'm really excited. He's got a great cast, obviously, um, mm -hmm. with uh, Jeff as Herman uh, and and Sherry as uh literally you know it's going to be and, and dan roebuck's fantastic as grandpa I, i'm i'm really excited really re very very excited and so getting back to our favorite word of this uh our topic of this uh podcast change you know i think directors have to continue to grow or evolve and we could call that change right evolution is change and so he we've watched him a little bit evolve not so much away from his casting but grow it you know and so with the Richard Brakes for instance and um uh with Jeff Phillips and so he he he's added on to his ensemble but not afraid to so it never bothers me if I'm not included I know that I'm part of the family and this might not be the one, you know, or if Rob called tomorrow and I picked up the phone, yes, it would just be yes, right? So, um, but I really respect him as a filmmaker, a storyteller, that he, he, he needs to use new, new, new faces, new places. So, um, so he's doing that. And I, I think it's gonna be great. I'm very supportive. 